Hello everybody, this is Talon, and it's time for another nutrition tier list. A series where I break down all the options in a given food group and rank them based on how nutritious they are and how good they are for your health. Today we're taking a dive on the wet side to analyze and grow to appreciate seafood. Fish, crustaceans, mollusks, and whatever else you might find in the deep ocean blue and other bodies of water that are not necessarily the ocean. Throughout history, many civilizations have either thrived or died based on how effective they were at fishing, and to this day, many of the animals on this list remain staples of certain people's diets and go under the radar on others. Seafood also seems to be the strange middle ground where meat lovers and people on more plant-based diets can often actually agree on something being good. Most of the items on this list have minimal health concerns for the general population and provide a variety of nutrients and benefits that are almost entirely unique to ocean dwellers. From a complete, often very lean protein to tough-to-get minerals like calcium, copper, iron, and zinc, to all-important vitamins like the B vitamins, and for those who don't get enough sunlight, vitamin D, to the essential vitamin B12, cobalamin, which to my knowledge is impossible to get from anything besides animal products and supplementation, to the coup de grace of seafood, omega-3 fatty acids, which I'll talk about more in a minute. It's safe to say that seafood stands apart as its own separate entity. With all that being said, to save on time, I'm only going to be mentioning any of these if there's something special related to them for that particular food, but notable sources will always be on screen. What I will be bringing up often is heavy metals, the one real consistent drawback to most of the foods on this list. Metals like cadmium, lead, and especially mercury in excess can cause some serious damage to the brain, kidney, and liver, and are very prominent in some sea life. Make sure that before you add any of these as a staple to your meal plan, you find out how much of these heavy metals your body will actually be able to tolerate. Anyway, looking at the tiers for this video, we're going to be comparing the nutritional content and benefits of each food against any shortcomings or health concerns that they may have. Keep in mind that these lists are ranked independent of each other, so for the purposes of this video, anything above the F tier will be a fine, albeit maybe unspectacular addition to your diet. The thing is, I actually want to use all the tiers, so the higher a food goes, that's just bonus. All numerical nutritional information on this list and across this series will be based on 100 grams of the individual food, for the sake of consistency and ease of comparison. For that same reason, assume everything on this list is based on the food being cooked. And if you enjoy these tier lists, or at the very least find them helpful, I encourage you to subscribe because there's plenty more on the way. But before I get into the list, there's one more thing uniquely pertaining to seafood that I want to go over in some depth first. The all-essential omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3s are a type of polyunsaturated fat necessary for optimal health that your body cannot make on its own, thus it must be consumed. There are three main important types of omega-3s. Alpha-linoleic acid, or ALAs, eicosapentaenoic acid, or EPAs, and docosahexaenoic acid, or DHAs. ALAs are found in nuts, seeds, and some vegetables, while the latter two are pretty much exclusively found in seafood. It's worth mentioning that the conversion to use rate of ALAs is far inferior when compared to the other two. Omega-3s yield various health benefits, including regulating blood pressure, cholesterol, and triglyceride levels, combating inflammation, improving blood vessel function, preventing heart disease and stroke, aiding in the creation of certain hormones, and improving brain health, effectively reducing the risks of dementia, Alzheimer's, and depression. Pretty much everything on this list is a solid source of omega-3s, and because of that, I'm only going to bring them up when there's something special. As always, though, I'll have the quantities on screen. And since so many people eat seafood specifically for omega-3s, there's something that's going to weigh pretty heavily in my final rankings. And now, with all that being said, let's take a deep dive under the sea and get to the list. First on this list, we've got anchovies. Now, ignoring the fact that they have a smelly smell that smells smelly, anchovies are among the highest calorie foods on this list, with an average micronutrient profile. A lot of the calories pull from the fact that anchovies are among the highest in protein and fat on this list, including being one of the best sources of omega-3s per gram. They're the best source on this list of vitamin B3, which converts food into energy and maintains nervous, digestive, and skin health. And they're one of the highest fish sources of creatine, which is essentially energy for your muscles. Couple that with the other muscular benefits due to the high protein concentration, the brain and heart benefits due to the high amount of omega-3s, and the lower mercury concentration hovering at around 0.02 parts per million, it becomes quite clear that you have yourself an A-tier fish. 
Freshwater largemouth bass is an average calorie fish with a below average micronutrient profile. It's among the best sources of manganese on this list and all around slightly above average when it comes to everything else that's really important in fish, including protein, omega-3s, vitamin B12, creatine, and unfortunately mercury at about 0.17 parts per million. Bass is an all around average fish that offers more than it takes and I think it just squeaks out in the B tier. Carp is an average calorie fish with an overall slightly above average micro content. It's the best source of a few micronutrients on this list. Vitamin D, which helps the body absorb and retain calcium and phosphorus, both of which are essential for bone health. And phosphorus itself, which is needed for tissue repair and the production of DNA and RNA. It's also the best source on this list of potassium, which is mainly used to maintain normal cellular fluid levels. These, coupled with its solid amount of omega-3s and lower amount of mercury at about 0.11 parts per million, leads me to give carp a solid A-tier placement. Catfish is a lower calorie fish with a lesser micronutrient profile. It's among the best sources of vitamin D and a solid source of vitamin B12. It does appear to be a pretty safe fish as it pertains to its mercury concentration, hovering at around 0.03 parts per million, but other than that, catfish doesn't really stand out in any way. It's lower in protein, it's not a lean fish, but it's not a fatty fish. Honestly, I think catfish belongs in the D tier. Caviar is one of the highest calorie foods on this list, with one of the better micronutrient profiles. They're the fattiest item on this list, being among the highest in saturated fat and by far having the most omega-3s per gram. On top of that, caviar is the best source on this list of magnesium, which regulates muscle and nerve function and helps make bone and DNA, vitamin B5, which helps break down food into energy and manufactures red blood cells and sex hormones, and choline, which plays a key role in brain and memory development, while also being among the best sources of vitamin B12, iron, vitamin B2, and calcium. And caviar is believed to have among the lowest concentrations of heavy metals of all seafood. Overall, a very safe and nutritious food, easily taking the first slot in our top tier. Clams are an average calorie food with the highest micronutrient content per gram on this list. It's the highest in protein of all shellfish on this list and is the best source on this list of vitamin B12, which is needed to form red blood cells and DNA and plays a key role in nervous system development, iron, a major component of hemoglobin which carries oxygen throughout the body, and vitamin C, a powerful antioxidant that protects against the effects of free radicals. Now, shellfish, like clams, are a somewhat common food allergen, and shellfish is one of the leading causes of foodborne illnesses, so watch out for that. But judging based on its nutrient capacity, I think it's fair to say that clams belong in the top tier. Atlantic cod is the lowest calorie fish on this list, with the lowest micro content per gram as well. Cod is notably a very lean source of protein and one of the better sources of selenium per calorie, and cod is one of the best sources of choline on this list as well. It's generally lower in its heavy metal concentration, at about 0.11 parts per million, but all in all, cod doesn't really offer anything that another fish doesn't offer more of. While still fine, cod will be going in the D tier. Dungeness crab is a lower calorie food with an above average micronutrient profile. It's among the best sources of vitamin B12, copper, and zinc. Crab is also a good source of astaxanthin, a carotenoid shown to increase HDL levels and protect brain health, with a pretty low mercury content at about 0.07 parts per million, albeit a noteworthy cadmium content. I feel the crab belongs in the A tier because it turns out there's a lot of value in those big meaty claws. Crawfish is the lowest calorie food on this list with a somewhat subpar micronutrient profile. Per calorie, it's a solid source of selenium, vitamin B12, copper, and creatine, but it's very low in protein and omega-3s compared to other shellfish, so you'd have to eat a lot of it to really measure up. Its low mercury content, around 0.03 parts per million, does allow for this, but crawfish is going to be going in the D tier. Realistically, you'll get tired of peeling them before you make up the difference. Cuttlefish is an average calorie food with one of the better micronutrient profiles. On top of being the best source of protein on this list, cuttlefish is the best source of vitamin B2, which helps convert food into energy and aids in red blood cell production, and is among the best sources of selenium, iron, phosphorus, and copper. Cuttlefish is also among the highest on this list in creatine, essentially fuel for your muscles. It is lower in its mercury content at about 0.06 parts per million, but be wary as it has been shown to contain a notable amount of cadmium as well. Cuttlefish's high protein and unique micro profile is unmatched on this list, earning cuttlefish a secure spot in the top tier. Eel is a higher calorie fish with one of the better micronutrient profiles. It's among the fattiest foods on this list, notably having the highest concentration of monounsaturated fats, about 9 grams mainly consisting of gadoliac and oleic acids, 
which are mainly shown to improve heart health. Eel is the best source on this list of vitamin E, an antioxidant that combats the effects of free radicals, and vitamin A, which is mainly used in eye health and preservation. It's also among the best sources of vitamin D and has a lower mercury content at about 0.05 parts per million. Eel has a completely unique nutrient profile compared to the other foods on this list, providing benefits most fish simply don't. It's going to be going in the A tier. Flounder is a lower calorie fish with a lower than average micro content. It's a very lean source of protein and a good source of omega-3s, selenium, and vitamin B12. White fish, like flounder, are a good source of choline, and flounder does have a lesser mercury content at about 0.06 parts per million. Flounder is about as average as a fish comes, nutritious, inoffensive, but unspectacular. It's going to be going in the C tier. Grouper is a lower calorie fish with one of the lowest micronutrient profiles. It is a very lean source of protein and is higher in creatine and choline compared to other fish. However, grouper is one of those fish with a concerningly high amount of heavy metals, containing around 0.45 parts per million of mercury. Because of this, and the fact that it doesn't really offer anything too special, I would say that grouper belongs in the D tier and should be consumed in serious moderation. Haddock is a lower calorie fish with a subpar micronutrient profile. It's once again a very lean source of protein and like other white fish, a good source of choline. But other than that, haddock doesn't really offer anything special in the world of fish. It's lower in mercury at about 0.06 parts per million, but overall haddock is just another fine fish going in the C tier. Pacific halibut is an average calorie fish with an average micronutrient profile. It's one of the better sources of protein and among the best sources on this list of magnesium, which regulates muscle and nerve function and helps make bone and DNA. It's higher in creatine and choline than most fish, but does have a mercury content around 0.24 parts per million, which is high enough that you should keep an eye on it. Overall, halibut is a fine fish to eat in moderation and will be landing in the C tier. Atlantic herring is a higher calorie fish with a solid micronutrient profile. It's among the fattiest foods on this list and is one of the highest in those all-important omega-3 fatty acids. Herring is also one of the best sources on this list of vitamin B12. The fact that herring is such a great provider of these essential nutrients, coupled with its lower mercury content around 0.08 parts per million, leads me to give it a solid A tier placement. Northern Lobster is one of the lowest calorie foods on this list, with a less than average micronutrient profile. It's among the best sources on this list of copper and is very lean, though that comes at the cost of having very little in the omega-3 department. Lobster is also a solid source of creatine and astaxanthin. As with all shellfish, watch out for allergies and foodborne illnesses, but one thing you don't have to watch out for as much is its mercury concentration at about 0.11 parts per million. Overall, lobster is an unorthodox seafood choice that will be going in the C tier. Atlantic mackerel is the highest calorie food on this list, with one of the best micronutrient profiles to go along with it. It's one of the fattiest foods on this list, including being the highest in saturated fat, about 4 grams, mainly palmitic acid, being among the highest in monounsaturated fat, about 7 grams, mainly erucic acid, and being a solid source of those signature omega-3 fatty acids. Mackerel is also among the best sources on this list of vitamin B12, vitamin D, and magnesium and has a lower mercury concentration at about 0.05 parts per million. Overall, mackerel is a shining example of a nutritious fatty fish and will land itself a safe spot in the A tier. Holy mackerel indeed. Mahi-mahi, also known as dolphin fish, is a lower calorie fish with a lower than average micronutrient content. It's a very lean source of protein and the best source on this list per calorie of vitamin B3. Similar to other white fish, it's a good source of choline but does have a higher mercury content at about 0.18 parts per million. Similar to most of the other white fish on this list, mahi-mahi is just fine. Nutritious but nothing special in normal quantities. It's going to be going in the C tier. Blue mussels are an average calorie food with one of the best micronutrient profiles on this list. They're among the highest in carbohydrates, about 7 grams, and a solid source of omega-3 fatty acids. Mussels are the best source on this list of vitamin B1, which helps the body generate energy from nutrients, and folate, which helps to form DNA and RNA and plays a role in protein metabolism. While being among the best sources on this list of vitamin B12, manganese, selenium, and vitamin C. Mussels also have a lower mercury content at around 0.02 parts per million, but they are shown to be higher in cadmium. And all shellfish, like mussels, are more prone to lead to foodborne illnesses. Overall, mussels are very nutritious and they'll be joining the top tier. 
Octopus is an average caloried food with a superior micronutrient profile. It's one of the best sources on this list of protein per gram and among the best sources of vitamin B12, selenium, iron, and vitamin B6. Octopus is one of the best sources of creatine on this list and has a very low mercury content at about 0.04 parts per million, but can have higher concentrations of lead and arsenic. Obviously, keep an eye out for those, but octopus is so nutritious, I'll have to put it in the top tier. Oysters are like the Brussels sprouts of the sea. I don't know how anyone willingly eats them. But my personal opinions aside, Pacific oysters are an average calorie food with one of the best micro profiles on this list. They're notably the highest in carbohydrates on this list at about 10 grams per 100 grams and are the highest in omega-3 fatty acids of any shellfish on this list. They're the best source on this list of zinc, which plays key roles in DNA creation, cell growth, and immune health, selenium, an antioxidant that's also used to make DNA, and copper, which helps make red blood cells, maintains nervous and immune health, and aids in iron absorption. They're also among the best sources of vitamin B12, manganese, and iron. Oysters contain a unique enzyme called DNA. HMBA, a phenolic compound with strong antioxidant effects. Oysters do have a lower mercury content at about 0.01 parts per million, but have been known to potentially contain notable amounts of cadmium and lead. Overall, if you can get past the fact that it literally has the consistency of a loogie, oysters are very nutrient dense and will be joining many of its other shellfish companions in the top tier. Atlantic salmon is a higher calorie fish with an above average micronutrient profile. It's among the best sources of omega-3 fatty acids on this list, and one of the best sources of vitamin D, vitamin B3, vitamin B6, vitamin B2, and vitamin B1. Salmon is higher in creatine than most fish, and among the best sources of astaxanthin, a carotenoid shown to increase HDL levels and promote brain health. All this, coupled with a low mercury content at around 0.02 parts per million, leads salmon into another comfortable top-tier placement. Sardines are a higher calorie fish with an above average micro content. They're among the fattiest fish on this list with a solid amount of it being omega-3s. Sardines are also the highest on this list of calcium, which is mainly needed for strong bones and teeth, and among the best sources of vitamin B12 and phosphorus. It is shown to have a lower mercury content at around 0.01 parts per million, but the main catch with sardines is its omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acid ratio. In 100 grams of sardines, there are over 3,500 milligrams of omega-6 fatty fatty acids. While omega-6s are shown to be essential for brain function, having too many of them compared to omega-3s can contribute to inflammation. And the reality of it is, you're probably getting omega-6s from everything else, from nuts, beans, oils, and even land-based meats. You probably don't want your dedicated source of omega-3s to contribute even further in this ratio. Sardines are nutritious, not a bad fish by any means, but because of this one caveat, I'm going to be placing them in the B tier. Scallops are a lower calorie food with a lower micronutrient profile, and that's really all I have to say about them. They're a decent source of protein per calorie, a mild source of omega-3s per calorie, a decent source of certain micronutrients per calorie that you can realistically get better from anything else on this list. They have a very low mercury content, typically less than 0.01 parts per million, but are shown to have a higher cadmium content. Since they don't really offer anything else to stand out, despite still being nutritious, scallops are going to be going in the D tier. Shrimp is a lower calorie food with a less than average micronutrient profile. They're among the leanest sources of protein on this list with a solid portion of its fat coming from omega-3s. They're also a solid source of the carotenoid astaxanthin. But despite having a lower mercury content at around 0.01 parts per million, they just fall short in regards to nutrient density. And because of this, when compared to other seafood, shrimp is going to be going in the C tier. Snapper is a lower calorie fish with an average micronutrient content. It's among the best sources of protein per calorie on this list, and one of the best sources of creatine and choline as well. They do have a somewhat notable mercury content at around 0.1 parts per million, but are all around a notch above most other white fish. Because of this, I think they edge out in the B tier. Squid is among the lowest calorie items on this list, with a below average micro profile. It is very lean, and among the best sources of copper on this list. However, squid is easily the lowest in protein on this list per gram, and that's kind of an important nutrient that we're weighing here. It does generally have a lower mercury content at around 0.04 parts per million, so it's not necessarily bad for you. But in a tier list, some things have to be towards the bottom, and sadly I think that's where squid belongs. At the end of the day, squid is going to be going in the D tier. 
Swordfish is an average caloried fish with a solid micronutrient profile. It's a good source of omega-3 fatty acids and among the highest in vitamin D, vitamin B3, and vitamin E. Here's the problem though, swordfish has easily the highest concentration of heavy metals on this list, at about one part per million of mercury. No decimals or anything, that's, that's a lot. Swordfish is going to be going in the B tier despite this because it is still very nutritious, but it should be eaten in serious moderation. Tilapia is an average caloried fish with a below average micronutrition profile. It is one of the better sources of protein and higher than most fish in creatine and choline. Tilapia uniquely contains more omega-6 fatty acids than omega-3s, having about 300 milligrams of the former. But because the contents of both are relatively low, this isn't quite as much to be concerned about. Along with its low mercury content at about 0.01 parts per million, tilapia is a fine white fish that will be joining the C tier. Trout is an average caloried fish with a pretty average micronutrition profile. It's a solid source of omega-3 fatty acids and among the best sources of vitamin D and vitamin B12. Trout is also one of the best sources on this list of creatine and astaxanthin. With its relatively low mercury content at about 0.07 parts per million, trout is a solid fish nutritionally that I think has earned a spot in the A tier. Skipjack tuna is an average caloried fish with a middling micronutrient profile. On top of being among the highest in protein on this list, they're the best source of vitamin B6, which is important for brain, nervous, and immune function, and among the best sources of vitamin B3. Uncanned tuna does have a somewhat higher mercury content, typically around 0.15 parts per million, but sometimes higher. That being said, tuna is still a staple for a reason, and given what it has to offer, I think it belongs in the A tier. Yellowtail is a higher caloried fish with a subpar micronutrient profile. While it is among the best sources of vitamin B3 on this list, where yellowtail really excels is with macronutrients. Typically containing more protein than tuna and more omega-3s than salmon, yellowtail is basically the best of both worlds in the two main criteria I think should be used to judge fish. Coupled with a lower mercury content at about 0.06 parts per million, yellowtail will be rounding out this list in the top tier. So, seafood. It's amazing to me just how distinct and diverse animals can be just because they live in the water. How different environments can enforce such variety in the creatures that live there. An ever-changing food web of predator versus prey based on the needs and provisions of different animals. But let's not forget that we're also a part of this food web and we have certain nutritional demands that some foods simply fulfill better than others. Every one of these foods would provide a solid foundation for a human diet. There's a reason fishing and shrimping and such have been such a fundamental part of human culture for as long as they have been. They just work. And while some of the foods on this list have their issues, especially for certain individuals, I'm not reaching when I say pretty much everything on here has a place in your meal plan, either as a staple or a delicacy. The next time you're thinking about what to build your meal around, don't forget about all your options that come from under the sea. Now, if you enjoyed the video, or at the very least learned a little something, I encourage you to subscribe because as I said, there's plenty more of these on the way. Feel free to leave down in the comments any seafood options that I left off here that you'd maybe like to see in a potential part two, and then which food group I should make a tier list for next. And remember that all I ask is that you do your own research and advocate for your own body. After all, you only get the one.